Jenny from The Sewing Palace in Helena, Montana. Today I'm coming to you from my sewing room and I'm going to show you how to work with laser cut kits. Laser cut kits are fabrics that are already cut with fusible web on the back. And so what you can do is you can easily take out your pieces and align them onto your background and create a gorgeous quilt. If you were to do this traditionally, you would get a pattern, draw around the pattern with fusible web, and then after it's traced, you will then take the fusible web, put it on the back of the fabric, and then cut out your piece. So it's a little laborious, not very hard to do, but a laser cut kit has eliminated all those steps. So your fusible web and your pattern is already traced and cut and applied to the back of the fabric. All you have to do is be creative and start putting your pieces on the fabric. So behind me is a quilt that we've designed at the Sewing Palace and it says Montana and has all iconic images of Montana. And they're all laser cut and I'm going to show you how to put that together. We also have two other kits that I'm going to show you. They're all available on our website so you can check it out. Let's look at a couple of the kits that you could choose from. So we have the kit that's behind me, which is the Montana. It comes with all the background and all the pieces that are all pre-cut and ready to fuse. We also have a really cute one that's called Sledding on the Sleeping Giant. Here in Helena, we have a mountain range that looks like a sleeping giant. So this has the sleeping giant in the background and then a moose and a bear sledding down the hill, a little snowman. So I'm going to show you the pieces to that. And then we also, as quilters, we love to stash fabric. And this is a cute little pillow that is a laser cut and it says quilters going to stash. So these are a couple of the kits that we have at the shop and I'm going to show you how to work with them. Let's get started. First, I'm going to tell you a couple of things that you'll want to have when you're working with a laser cut. So this is the laser cut kit that says Montana. And when you get a kit like this, the cool thing about this is all the pieces are all laser cut. They're beautifully cut, no raw edges, and they're ready to go. On the back of each of these pieces is fusible web. And some of the pieces, when they cut them with a the laser, they'll have little pieces that hold them together. So you'll need a little pair of scissors that you will gently just cut those little pieces that are held together to separate your pieces. So right here, I'll just separate the M from the entire piece, and then I can work with just this piece here. So you'll want your laser cut and some scissors. The other helpful tool to have is a uh, fusible mat. So these are fusimats. They're made by Sharon Bradley. We have them at the shop. They come in several sizes. But what's nice about these is you can see through them. So if you have a pattern to lay out or something that you need to lay underneath your project, you can then build your applique on top. You can iron on it and the fusible will not stick to this mat. So it makes it perfect. This will withstand really high degree temperatures and when you're finished with your project, you let it cool, it peels off, and then you can apply it to your uh, fabric or your background fabric. So this is one size. And then the one that I have underneath is a larger size of Fusimat. So this is the one I'm gonna be using today. And then the other couple things that you'll need is an ironing board. So right here I have a woolly pressing mat. And then you'll want an iron of some sort that you can heat up your applique with. So we are ready to get started and we'll start breaking down our block. So the kit that we have at the shop for the Montana has a gorgeous piece of batik fabric that is gradated from a rust to an aqua. And this is included in the kit. What you first do with this piece is you trim it down. There are directions for this step and you'll trim this down to 14 inches by 34 and then that will be your background piece. So you can choose whichever direction or place that you wanna have it lay out. So I'm gonna set that aside and I'll trim it down in a little bit. Then you'll want to get a couple of the pieces prepared. So you wanna get uh, the little arrowhead on top of the O, the horseman and the teepee ready. So I'm gonna show you that next. 
Remember your pieces will have fusible web on the back and some of them may be attached to another little piece of fabric that you will trim away with a sharp pair of scissors. There's just a little notch of fabric that you just trim away and then you're going to fuse the arrowhead onto the O of Montana. The trick I have with some fusible webs is pulling away the paper can be tricky. So what you want to do is you want to get a pin and you just score the back. Once you've scored the back, you can easily pull away the paper from the center out so that you're not picking at an edge and fraying it. Then you'll lay your arrowhead wherever you want and then you'll apply heat to it so that the arrow actually sticks to the O. I haven't pulled the paper off the background of the circle yet because I'm just fusing the arrowhead on. So I'm just going to pre-fuse that piece. The other pieces that I need to get ready are the teepee and the rider with the horse. So we'll do those pieces right now. Now that I've got my components ready that were for the first steps, I'm gonna then start building my blocks. So the next step that it tells me to do is to take the bison and tuck them into the M. Now I'm gonna flip it over and then I'm going to figure out how I want my bison to sit. So it has a placement diagram that you can refer to on the pattern and then you'll get your bison all ready. And I'm going to have his little tail hang out the back because I think that's kind of cute. And then I'll fuse him and then I'll continue by getting trees and um, the arrowhead with the trees. So I'm going to fuse the bison and keep assembling my pieces. I'm going to continue getting all my components together. So I now have my mining tools to get separated so that I can place them on the background. So I've got the shovel. I'm going to take the paper off the shovel real carefully. The shovel is going to get tucked inside of the A. So you see the beauty of this sheet is once you have ironed it and it is cooled, 
which I have just ironed this bare to make this whole component. Once it's cooled, I can now pull this piece off and work with it instead of several different pieces as one. So that makes it much easier for layout. And the fusible web stays on the back of the fabric. It doesn't stick to this surface. So when you go to put it on your background, it's ready to go. So now I'm going to get ready to lay out my background and fuse it on that. I have one more component that I need to get ready, which is the N with the rider. And the rider, I've pulled away the fusible web on all the pieces, and the rider will sit on the N. I'm now ready to fuse my components onto my background fabric. This background fabric can be trimmed to 14 inches tall by 34 long. I'm going to leave it as a large piece so that I can start playing with it to see if I want to be more in the rust end or the blue end. So the center of my applique is about this yellow moon or sun. So I've pressed a a seam or really pressed a crease in the center of that. So that can be my center point to start working from. And then I'll just build from that center point out. Tucking pieces and I'm following the diagram as I go. So my layout diagram is on my pattern so I can get a nice visual of what that will look like. But the other fun thing is you can build it as you wish and kind of create whatever design you like. If you look closely over here, this is our sleeping giant mountain range here in Helena. And this tree is kind of tucked underneath, but I really like the shape of the tree, so I'm going to put it on top. And then I'll tuck the M in underneath there. The other thing that you could do is you could get a ruler and lay that ruler so that you can get it straighter or along a certain line. And that's the other reason why I didn't trim this down ahead of time so that I can square up from my applique and make sure that I'm straight. And this is a beautiful fabric to really play with to either have a blue sky or maybe a sunset sky. So once I've got that all laid out in a pleasing manner, I'll fuse it in place with my iron and I'll get ready to start quilting it shortly. I wanted to show you the technique with the ruler, which would be laying the ruler down and then using that as a guide to shift the bottom of your letters to keep it straight. So I just wanted to show you if you wanted to use that technique, how you would use the ruler and then pull it away. And then when you're ready, you're gonna do the fusing with your iron. Once you have your applique fused onto your background fabric, you'll make a quilt sandwich. So you will layer the background fabric. I've chosen a wheat that looks like the wheat fields of Montana, a layer of bamboo batting and my top. I've adhered those layers with a 505 spray adhesive. This is temporary, it's acid free. And when you do that, you lay your backing fabric wrong side up. So this would have been laying wrong side up. You'd spray that with 505 spray. So it'd be slightly tacky. Then you would lay the batting and smooth the batting out. Then you would spray the batting with the spray and smooth out your top. This replaces pins and is temporary and it washes out in the laundry absolutely wonderful for basting quilts. So you'll get your quilt all basted and then you'll be ready to do some stitching. Let's talk a little bit about the threads that we're going to use to start quilting. So for the back of my fabric I had kind of a brownish color that had wheat on it. So I'm going to put a medium color brown in my bobbin and so I've chosen a polyester brown thread to use for that. And then for the top thread, I'm going to switch a couple of times to match my color. One of my favorite threads to work with is Superior Threads Micro Quilter. It's a very fine thread and it blends in and you can use it for the whole project um, if you pick a neutral thread. 
the other thread that you could use would be a monofilament thread. So this is a clear thread and you wouldn't have to change the top very often. Sometimes you can get a little shimmer from this and sometimes it's a little challenging to work with because it um, is hard to see. So be aware of that. But I'm going to switch my threads out so that I can see them. I'm going to first sew around my bear, which is black, and so I'm going to put black thread in the top. And I'm going to drop the feed dogs. So on many machines, there's a dial or a button. On a Bernina machine, they have a button over on the side, and when you drop it, the feed dogs will then drop. I'm going to put the brown thread in my bobbin. And then I'm going to use a special presser foot. This is the presser foot number 44C. It's used for free motion. It can be used for embroidery. I really like this foot because it's clear on the bottom. I can see through it. It's great for echo quilting. And it's dished so it can float up over seams. This doesn't have a slit in the edge of the foot. So my trick for that is you slide the foot over the needle pull the thread through the needle, and then put your foot in place. So I'm ready to start quilting and I'm gonna position my fabric next. Let's get ready to start quilting around this bear. So my goal is to go around the whole shape of the bear. When your feed dogs are dropped, that means you can move the fabric in any direction and that makes it so you don't have to pivot. This is the best way to go around shapes that have lots and lots of angles. The first thing that I'll do is I'll bring my bobbin thread up. So I bring the needle all the way down and then all the way back up and then I pull my top thread and then your bobbin thread will be right there. So you can pull that. What that does is keep it all tidy on the back. Then you're going to drop your foot, the feed dogs are down, and then you are the one that is in charge of moving the fabric. So if you stop pushing it, you actually won't go anywhere. I love this part. This is my favorite part of quilting, free motion quilting. Another thing to engage is needle down so that whenever you stop your needle is sunk in the fabric. So I'm going to select that and then I'm just going to keep working around my bear. Notice I'm not going to be spinning my fabric or pivoting. I'm just moving it so that I can go around the shape of the bear. I'm almost there. I'm coming around his nose. And then I'll come back to my start spot. When I get to the start spot, what I want to do is do a couple of stitches that are kind of on top of each other. So that means just kind of going back and forth so it ties your stitch. When you're finished, you lift your presser foot, pull it away, and then trim your bottom and your top thread, and then you can move on to the next applique. I've switched my thread to brown thread because I'm going to go around my buffalo. Again, I'm going to hold my top thread, bring the needle down and back up, and then pull my bobbin thread so that I have a nice tail. And then I'll hold my threads to the side in my hand, drop my foot, and start quilting. The other thing about free motion quilting is you can add texture. So I'm at the top of this buffalo, and usually they have lots of fur and lots of texture on the top. So what I can do is actually add that texture by just freely going back and forth and giving him that texture that you would see on a buffalo. So I'm appliquing, I'm actually decorative stitching, and I'm quilting all in one step. That's the cool part. And then I'll just even it out to finish it to the other side.
You'll continue this fashion by appliquing each of your shapes with ever, whichever thread you want or whichever stitch you want, and you'll get all those shapes appliqued down. You can then quilt the background with different stitches, other threads. You can free motion quilt it with little loops. You could also do decorative stitches or you could do just straight line stitches to hold your background in place. You'll then finish the edge with binding. Be sure to watch our binding video that is on YouTube and you'll have a beautiful wall hanging that says Montana. This is Jenny from the Sewing Palace in Helena, Montana. Stay tuned for my other videos showing you the Quilters Gonna Stash pillow and the sledding on the Sleeping Giant. This is fun with laser cut quilts. We're in Helena, Montana. Our website is thesewingpalacebernina.com. Please visit us there and check out our YouTube channel for more videos. Thanks for joining me today. Have a good day. Bye-bye.